Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Elite Wellness Warriors. Um, you will find us, of course, on Facebook, so please do join us. Um, it is a group designed to support those with ME, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, something that is very close to my heart and something that I've spent most of my life trying to uh, help other people who've got this condition, because as you all know, if you're watching this, it's a debilitating and life-limiting um, disposition. So anything that I've learned in my journey, I will always share with you. And one of the key things that I have learned in my journey is the analysis of my DNA through 23andMe. And uh, one of those things that has come up as being an area that I need to be concerning myself with is something called cystothionine beta synthase enzymes. Now, enzymes are coded for by genes. So the 23andMe uh, uh, polymorphism did identify that there was a problem with the gene, which is why I've got a problem with the enzyme. OK, so what does this lovely, lovely enzyme do? So before I continue, this looks like a horrible smorgasbord of vileness. Please do not panic, do not worry. I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. So the first thing I'm going to start with over here is something called methionine, which comes from dietary protein sources. So the more uh, dietary protein you eat, the more methionine you have. And that goes into the cycle that you see here and gets converted to homocysteine. Homocysteine, I want you to pick up on this cycle over here, is processed by the CBS enzyme and is converted to cystothionine. Cystothionine then goes into this cascade of reactions down here and it gets converted to ammonia, pyruvate and sulfites. Sulfites are processed by the enzyme called the SUOX enzyme and those sulfites are converted into sulfates which are then safely passed out in your urine which of course is done through your kidneys. You'll notice that the SUOX gene responsible for the conversion of sulfites to sulfates operates with the two cofactors in mind here which are molybdenum and vitamin B1. And it's really important we understand that if we've got a sulfite problem, there's a buildup of sulfites in the system, you can have all manner of things like hives and itchiness, stomach upsets, vomiting and diarrhea, trouble swallowing, flushing, dizziness, a drop in blood pressure, which is of course what we have when we have postural hypertension or hypotension, um, and the trouble breathing that we can experience when we're experiencing things like air hunger, which I know I've had in the past, and it's not a, it's not a desirable thing. Also, can I bring you back to ammonia, and ammonia is deeply toxic in the body and must be removed safely by the liver, um, and if it's not done so, it can lead to serious problems also, which I'll come to in a moment. Okay, so... Where did this journey start? As I said, I've had my 23andMe genetic profile analyzed by Genetic Genie and the CBS enzyme you can see down here, or did you see, I should say the CBS polymorphism, C699T, is come up as being a problem. Okay. Now, my particular defect means that my enzyme works too fast, and that in turn means that I end up with too little homocysteine and too little cystothionine because down here it's been uh, converted to sulfites too quickly. Okay, um, I also have a high level of taurine and ammonia and people who've got a CBS upregulation, which basically in simple terms means that it's working too fast, we tend to have a sulfur intolerance and we can also have a BH4 um, issue, which means that we have a problem in our control of, where's my cursor gone? There it is. A uh, lack of BH4 can lead to mast cell degranulation. So if you've got a histamine issue, this could be related to a lack of BH4, which is a direct consequence of CBS upregulation. Okay. So, talking about hyperammonemia, which is excess ammonia. What can it lead to? Well, first of all, it can lead to tremors, slurring of speech, somnolence, I can never say that word, uh, vomiting, cerebral edema, swelling, 
and blurry vision. And most importantly for ME, CFS, lethargy, and neurocognitive issues, brain fog, etc., etc. So, ammonia is broken down to urea, which is urinated out, and obviously it's processed by the kidneys in something called the urea cycle. So it just seems to me that there is a correlation here. There seems to be some connection here with my body aches and my brain fog and all of those symptoms that we all know about when we have ME-CFS. There's got to be something going on related to ammonia. There's got to be something related to perhaps sulfites and most certainly um, you've got to take histamines into account here as well. So what have I been doing? Well, I've been taking something called molybdenum. And molybdenum is a very powerful supplement. I will tell you this now, it's not to be quaffed at. Uh, dietary sources, there are many of them. Um, uh, but because I don't have lots of beans and pulses and things like that, I don't tend to have a lot of molybdenum, which is also present, I should say, in uh, organ meats, which I'm not too keen on eating those, to be honest with you. I never have the urge to go and chomp on a heart, a liver, a kidney, um, or various other sources as well. It's not something that I like to do. So I take some molybdenum, and it's very, very important you understand that molybdenum is important in SUOX, uh, the, 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 the sulfite oxidase um, uh, processing, which, as I said to you earlier, is responsible for is responsible for the conversion of sulfites to sulfates. It's also responsible for aldehyde oxidase, which is perhaps why we uh, cannot usually break down alcohol and drugs. And obviously, I'm talking about uh, uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Why we can't break down these things correctly. Molybdenum is also responsible for the effective functioning of xanthine oxidase. I don't know where my cursor has gone. There it is. Thank you. Uh, xanthine oxidase, which converts xanthine to uric acid. Too much uric acid can lead to gout, but it's important you understand uric acid is a very, very powerful antioxidant. So it does have a very, very good benefit for the human body. Mitochondrial amidoxone or doxime, I should say, reducing component. Not enough is known about this, but it is thought to remove toxic byproducts of metabolism. And it's very important that whilst molybdenum, molybdenum is amazing, you've got to reduce your dietary sources of sulfites also. So dietary sources include baked goods, um, deli meats, hot dogs, sausages, gravies, dressings, sauces, soups, dehydrated fish, crustaceans, shellfish, noodles, rice mixes, and soy products. So if it's, I found that out a long time ago. I do not tolerate soy very easily. Soy is also an incredibly high source of histamine, but also now I know it's a high source of sulfites. Okay, so now if you found that video useful, there are many others like it on my particular Facebook group, which as I said to you before, it's called Elite Wellness Warriors, and I will link it to the bottom of this particular uh, video in the comment section also. Please do um, give us a thumbs up and a like, and a um, and it would be great to see you on Elite Wellness Warriors, healing ME, CFS, and fibromyalgia. So please do join us um, if you found this useful, uh, this video useful, and I really, really want to wish you the very best in your healing, and I really do hope that, uh, that your life ahead is filled with good health, wealth and happiness. Thank you folks, thank you so much.